we lift you up for you're worthy. You're worthy of all praise. All. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, just listening to her, the, I can just feel the spirit moving in each and every one of us and <coughs> believing for healing and deliverance just from listening. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are the healer. Lord God, we thank you, and we lift you up, and we give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. 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 Just be still before the Lord just a little bit. Joy, 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 Lord. We thank you. Hmm. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Help me. And I know it is the of the Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Mm. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the subject of to hear and to be healed. And I'm going to, my key verse for this is coming from Luke 5:15. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and a great multitude came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for tonight, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for those who came out tonight, Lord God, to hear your word, Lord God. They could have been doing anything else, Lord God. But, Lord God, you laid it on their hearts to come, Lord God, to hear and to be healed. And we thank you, Lord God, for it. In the name of Jesus. Romans 4.20 tells us that he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in his faith, giving glory to God. If you just repeat after me. My spirit is not weak. My, spirit is not weak. My faith is not weak. My faith gets stronger, My faith gets stronger. Every, time every time I speak. My faith is not weak, but my faith gets stronger every time I speak. You know, in Psalms 107.20, he tells us that he sent his word and healed them and deliver them of their destruction. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and to and be in good health, just as your soul prosper. The thief comes not to accept to kill, steal, and destroy. And Jesus said that he have come that we may have life 
and that we may have it more abundantly. Mark tells us that God has given us authority over the enemy. And he tells us in Mark 13, 34, it is like a man going to a far country and he left his house and gave authority to his servants. That's us, we are God's servant. God has given us authority over the enemy. He's given us authority over sickness. He has given us authority over disease. In the name of Jesus, we have the authority. We have authority to stand against anything that's trying to kill, steal, and destroy us. If we don't stand in our authority, we'll allow sickness and disease to take us over. It is not God's will for us to live in sickness and disease or to live in constant pain in our bodies. God wants his people well. Mark 4, 24 tells us, Then he said to them, Take heed to what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And you who hear, more will be given. In the Amplified Bible, it tells, it's stated this way. And he said to them, be careful, be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. I want to say that again because I, I've been meditating on that scripture all week as I was preparing for the night and God was just working with me in it and, he, and he's saying be careful of what you hear. We're hearing so many things out here in this world. We're hearing so many things in different churches that is not of God. And he's saying that we need to be careful. He says, because the measure of thought and study you give to the truth that you hear will be measured of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. The word virtue is the same word used in Luke 6, 19. And it says that the whole multitude sought to touch him. For there went virtue out of him and healed them all. So I looked up this word virtue in the Strong's Concordant, and it is translated as power. So the same measure of power in your life is directly connected to the measure of thought and study you give to the word of God. If there is a power shortage in your life, it is directly related to the measure of thought and study that you give to the word. It's not on God, it's on us. We need to get into the word because that's how we grow. And I want you to look at, well, if you have your Bibles with you, but I have the scriptures here, um, Luke 5, verses 12 to 13, and I'm in the New King James Version. And it happened when he was in a certain city, and behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus, and he fell on his face and employed him, saying, Lord, if you are willing you can make me clean. Mm -hmm. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him. It is interesting in this particular scripture that it says that the man was full of le leprosy. Mm -hmm. 
It was so bad that leprosy can make your skin peel off, and all, and, and those things is, it's it's like. Today we would say it would be equivalent to diabetes if you did not take care of yourself, where you have problems with with your limbs and things of that nature. But then he was full of leprosy. But here's the interesting thing. For, he fell on his face. He gave reverence to Jesus. And he said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Most people know that God has the ability to heal, but are they are not sure that God will heal them. It is God's will for you to be healed just as the man that was full of leprosy. People are not questioning the ability of God. They are questioning his willingness. It must be subtle in our heart that God will heal. When he says, I am willing, Jesus has the ability to make that which was unclean, clean. Because in the Jewish custom, if you were full of leprosy, you couldn't touch that person. But Jesus mm, reached out and touched him, showing that he has the ability to take anything that you have in your body that's going on and make it clean and heal it. Luke 5.15 talks about, it says, However, the report went out concerning him all the more, and a great multitude came together to hear and to be healed of their infirmities. The measure of thought and study you give to the word of God will be the measure that will come back to you, and that is the power. You must hear the word of God because hearing the word of God causes faith to come into your heart and faith gives you the capacity to believe God for a miracle. You can't believe God for a miracle if you don't have faith. Faith is a requirement for miracle. Crowds came to hear and to be healed. There are those who don't want to hear and we find that in churches all over and wherever you go. Oh, no, I heard that before. I heard that before. And they kind of tune out. And when they tune out, they miss what God has for them. So it's important that we hear the word of God. Because faith comes to you. And you will gain knowledge of the will of God concerning his willingness to hear you. If we look at Luke 6, 17 to 19, and it states, And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude from all Judea and Jerusalem, from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their disease as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits. And they were healed, and the whole multitude sought to touch for the power, the virtue, went out from him, and he healed them all. And it's interesting in this particular scripture because normally we kind of separate healing from deliverance. But in this particular scripture, as he begins to give the word, as he teaches, they get delivered as well as getting healed. So sometimes just the word itself will give you the deliverance that you need and the healing that you need to, from all your infirmities, from all the harassments of the enemy, from depression, all those things. And it's important 
that we hear. It says the multitudes come to hear and be healed. The measure of thought and study you give to what you hear will be the virtue and knowledge that will come back to you. And I mean, and that, and that, that scripture is throughout this message tonight because I want it to get down in your spirit. I want you to get down in it so that when you hear the word of God and you will be able to discern what is going on and what is being said, then you will gain the necessary power and knowledge that you need to go forth. Amen? Amen. 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 If anyone has an ear, let them hear. Hearing the word of God will produce faith in your life, and faith will give you the ability to believe for the impossible. Tonight, in your hearing of the word, and you allow the faith to work in you, that as you hear, the word of faith is going to increase your capacity to receive the miracles, working power of God that is going to set you free from every sickness and disease and everything that is tormenting you. It is interesting because God has body parts. And all we got to do is just believe and reach up in the spirit realm and pull down what God will, what we need. Because he says that I will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So he's a supplier. He's, it is interesting that he wants us to tap into the supernatural to receive what he has for us. And it's a powerful thing. We serve a supernatural God. And he has given you faith to connect with the kingdom of God. Faith connects us to the supernatural. Faith connects us to the supernatural. So then, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. You were not made to be sick. God's original plan for human beings was to be well. Your body was designed to work in a state of health. That goes back to the garden with Adam and Eve. There was no sickness and disease in the garden. There's no sickness and disease in the end. But why would God want us to be sick in the middle? That's where we're at right now. And God has made that provision for us that if we trust in him, if we believe his word and believe what he's saying in his word, we can walk in divine supernatural health. Now, I'm not negating the medical profession, okay? There are, there are doctors who are on the same side of God because they're trying to bring healing. But on the other side, you have doctors who are just in it for the money. But there are doctors who sincerely want to help. There's, there's medicine, there's medication that we can get that God has put on the planet Earth in the ground that will come up, that we can come up and, 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 and men and women of science have learned how to take those things to make it of good use. But, and that's the but, that we seek God first in all that we do. Because God wants to heal us and we can walk in that divine health because he says so. So we need to trust God no matter which way we go. We need to trust God. And so... Sickness and disease is an invasion of an outlaw force seeking to rob you of your health. It is an invasion on us to take away our health because we're made in the image of God. And, who the, and, and the enemy hates God. So if we're made in his image, who's he going to hate? He's going to hate us. 
but he has given us authority over the enemy. Amen? Okay. The knowledge of your covenant rights and the privilege for being whole will enable you to stop the destruction of sickness and disease and the power of God will heal you. Faith is an exercise of your belief, your confession, you receive, and when you do what God says, faith brings the expectation of the fulfillment of God's promises. Expect your healing. Expect it. Because that, was, that is what God wants for us. You don't have to die of sickness and disease before your time. You can, live a, you can live by the power of God. No matter what has been said about you, God's word has the power to override the negative reports. <sighs> Refuse to die and ultimately death from sickness and disease. When you go to the doctor... Don't go there and say, well, I'm not going to receive that. Because he, what, he's, what the doctor is doing, he is giving you the idea or the thought of what's going on in your body. So you can work with that. So if the doctor tells you you got a cold, what do you do? You're going to go home and you're going to say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, deal with this cold. Okay? So we don't want to be ignorant to those things. But we can take authority over those things. Okay? You have the power to say no to death, sickness, disease, and God will back you up with his power. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to connect to the supernatural, and you will be walking in unbelief. We must get rid of unbelief so that the supernatural can work in our lives. He who have an ear, let him hear. What you hear are the measures measuring back to yourself the measure of virtue, whether you see it or not, there is a supernatural, invisible, virtue, power that is flowing out of you that when people touch you, things can happen. Just by them touching you, because of the virtue that is in you, because of what you heard, Every time you hear the word of God, faith and anointing is being imparted to you. Mark 5, 25, 34 says, A certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. A certain person had a problem with sickness and disease for a long period of time. You can insert that, put that in there for you. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all she, that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I can touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Who touched me? But his disciples said, you see a multitude throgging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, 
knowing what she had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your affliction. The woman was plagued for 12 years. She spent all the money she had to get well, yet she got no better. When she heard, when she heard, when you heard, when she, when you heard, when she heard, what did she hear? That's the question. What did she hear? She must have heard others being healed. She began to visualize her body being healed. If Jesus healed them, then she too could be healed. She took the word she heard and personally applied it to her own life. Faith cometh by hearing the word of God. The word she heard moved her to action. The measure of thought and study you give to the word you hear will be the measure of virtue and power that will come back to you. Faith hears, speaks, believes, and acts. Faith hears, speaks, believes, and acts. This woman said, if only I could touch the hem of the gun, I shall be made well. If only I can get into the word of God and find the scriptures on healing, I can be made well. I can be made well. Because Jesus is no respecter of person. What he's done for others, he will do for you. It is part of your inheritance. The word you speak can express faith or doubt. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Faith can release doubt or faith. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Faith will move you to pursue the things God has provided for you. Faith acts. Now, in Matthew 20, 29 and 34, it says, Now, as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. Notice in each one of these instances, a great multitude followed him. Why? Because Jesus was saying something that people have never heard before. And it's interesting that the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were experts of the law, who knew the old covenant, wasn't, wasn't impart, imparting the word of God into their lives. They knew about healing because... When Jesus cast out the demons, they came and said, hey, you know, uh, why are you doing this on the Sabbath? You could, you know, you, you got any other time to do this. Why do this today? So they knew that healing and deliverance and casting out demons, they knew that that existed. But what was it about Jesus that, that spoke this? Jesus came speaking the gospel and when he spoke the gospel, when he spoke the truth of, his, of the word, miraculous things happened. People came by the multitudes because Jesus had something that they needed. Jesus has something that you and I need. Jesus has something that you and I need. And behold, two blind men were sitting on the, by the road. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, 
O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. There are some people who don't want you to be healed, and they will come and try to suppress the power of God from working in your life. They told him, hey, 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 be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Never let anybody keep you from pressing into what God wants for you. Never. Never. But listen what it said. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, It's interesting. He says, What do you want me to do for you? Now, it's something interesting about this because beggars dressed a certain way in that time. So Jesus knew that they were blind. But he says, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be open." So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. So immediately, they received their sight. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Romans 4, 17. Listen to this. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He's talking about Abraham. In the presence of him who he believed, God, who gave life to the dead and called those things which do not exist as they did. God spoke to Abraham and called him a father before he even had a child. Before, he, before Sarah even conceived, God called Abraham a father. He had spoke Something that didn't exist at the time that manifested later to become a reality to Abraham. Abraham believed God by faith, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Abraham was a man who walked by faith and not by sight. God called those things which do not exist as they did. We're talking about Going in the supernatural, in the heavenlies, speaking to God, reaching in because there's healing and deliverance in him. And we pull that down by faith into us. Abraham believed what he heard. And if we're going to receive from the Lord, we have to believe what we heard also. Amen. We have to walk by faith when, we, when it comes down to healing. We have to call those things not as though they were even before we see the manifestation of them. You've got to call yourself well when you look, when, when you look like you're still sick. You have to call yourself well. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are not seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We are not just limited to the natural realm. We are also connected to the heavenly realm where we are connected to God. Our spiritual position in Christ in the heavenly realms, which is, which is more real than the natural realm. For in this realm is where we receive the promises of God. We must understand. By faith, we understand the world was framed in the world by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made by the things which are visible. 
But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 1 John 5.14 tells us, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. One of the definitions for confidence in the Greek is boldness of speech. We can approach God with boldness of speech and ask anything according to his will. We need to know that his will to have confidence as we pray. If we don't know his will, we have a lack of knowledge which can kill us. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. The measure of your thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue, power, and knowledge that comes back to you. Mark eleven twenty three twenty four 24 says, For surely I say to you, Whatsoever you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he say will be done. He will have whatever he say. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you will have them. This is a prayer that changes things. This is a prayer that changes things. Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. This is the prayer of agreement. 1 John 5.15 And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions that we have asked him for. Today, I release faith for healing. Continue to confess the word of God and give thanks for what he has done. What do you do when you wake up tomorrow and that problem is still there. You need not go back to God and say, God, please heal me. You begin to thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That the night you heal me. What, what, what's the day's date? The day's the, the 21st. Father God, thank you that you healed me on the 21st. When tomorrow you wake up on the 22nd, Lord, thank you that you heal me on the 21st. When you work up the next day, Lord, I thank you that you heal me. You thank the Lord until that manifestation of that comes that you need for your healing. There is no failure in God. So why should there be failure in you? Be persistent. Keep striving to do what you could not do until a manifestation of your healing is obvious. That's what I have for you tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to have communion tonight, but I want to say this in all sincerity. Tonight, there were three methods of healing that transpired. The first method is from worship. You can, with the right kind of worship, you can receive healing. The second method of healing is hearing the word. Just by hearing the word, the, the Holy Spirit can penetrate you and heal you. The third method is laying on hands. Oh, yeah, and we have another method through communion. Amen? Amen. So tonight, if when um, we're going to pray for you. We're gonna, if you want prayer, we're going to pray for you. We we'll take the communion first. Okay. I I know the hour is late. But. Amen. Everyone enjoy the word. Yay. Our beloved elder is such a teacher. His anointing is 
so powerful with healing. He loves healing. Now we're going to have our other beloved elder come and do the communion. Amen. And then we'll be out of your way and we'll have mom, friend, sister do our um, benediction. Amen. I'll hand it over to Elder Ray. Thanks for coming out tonight. Tonight, uh, we're going to have everyone stand and come up to the altar to receive the cup and receive the bread. You can come now. Everyone take of the cup and take of the bread and and hold it and we'll do it, we'll receive it all together. Praise God. He's glorious. He is glorious. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. You are the great I am. You are he who was and is and is to come and who is forevermore. You are the resurrection and the life. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for this purposed time. Because, Lord, this is a purposed time of communion. Communion with each other and communion with you. It's a wonderful time. It's a precious time. It's a time that you told the disciples when you actually had the first one, the first communion, you told them that you earnestly wanted to have this with them. You really looked forward to it. To show them, to yield to them, and for them to take it in and receive from you. We give you glory. Father, you have sanctified the bread, you have sanctified the cup, because it is dedicated for communion. Lord, we, set, we sanctify it also the cup and the bread because Lord we take it as communion and we give you glory for it in Jesus name on the night when Jesus was betrayed he took bread and broke it gave it to his disciples and he said take and eat Then he said, 
this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat this, do this in memory of me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for yielding your body. We thank you for yielding your body to the beatings, the scourgings, the abuse, the lies, the mocking, the ridicule the crown of thorns, the nails, the, the shame of being hung on a tree, being nailed to a cross, taking all of our sins upon your body, and then taking the fiery judgment of the Father for our sins on your body. Then laying your body down, you laid it down, Lord. You said it no man take my life, but I lay it down. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then you took it back up again. You, you, hallelujah. For Lord, you said you are the resurrection. Lord, you said, I lay my life down and I take it back again. Thank you. Thank you for your body. For we do receive this bread in memory of you, Lord. Thank you. Then after they ate, he took the cup and blessed it and told to his disciples to drink ye all of it. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, because the blood puts into effect the New Testament. Lord, you said, this is my blood which is shed for you. This cup is the New Testament sealed with the blood of my death. For as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For when we eat, the bread and you drink the cup you do show forth my death burial and resurrection till I come again thank you Lord for your blood thank you Lord for redemption because Lord you said without the shedding of blood there's no redemption thank you Lord for the new covenant which is grace which is perfect nothing else needed grace is perfect it's total it's complete it's not lacking anything it's continuous and it grows thank you Lord for your grace in the mighty name of Jesus the father we thank you Lord for everyone that's here tonight Lord father we declare and decree healing Lord not just physical healing, mental healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, financial healing, relational healing, complete and total, absolute healing. In the name of Jesus, healing from unforgiveness, healing from doubt, Healing from fear. Healing from, ter- from trepidation. Total healing, Lord. Complete and whole. In the name of Jesus. By your blood. By your sacrifice. For by your stripes we are healed. We thank you in Jesus' name. Someone with ear, a ear. Anybody have something with their ear? Ear issue. <laughs> okay. Can we? I could. I could feel it in the spirit. Want to pray? <coughs> we have the oil. Hold on a minute. It should be behind. Okay. Sherry. 
Father, we Because sometimes 